Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In this lecture we are going to make a new project to show how to build buttons with material design. All right let's call our application something new like we'll call this starter Android UI make a unique package name and a new folder to save the project and choose Kotlin as your programming language. Then hit finished which is going to launch the app for us, a template, and we're going to start using buttons in our app. Alright here is our brand new app. The first step that we want to take is to ensure that we are using the material design library. Alright, so for that we're going to go to our Gradle scripts and we are going to visit build.gradle for the module of our app. Alright, and here in this file we have to ensure that we're using material design. Scroll down to where we have dependencies and make sure you have this implementation of com.google.android.material. This means that we are indeed using material components. And by default, this should already be here whenever you make a new project. If it's not here, then add this line. And you might also want to update your Android Studio. We're also getting this suggestion to configure the Gradle wrapper to use distribution with sources, and we can apply that suggestion. All right, let's just allow the Gradle build to sync with the app project, and we'll get started with using buttons. Buttons are actually already automatically imported into our project material design buttons so let's say I decide to add in a button either via code or via the palette here I will drag and drop this button into my app and this button here this purple color button it actually is by default already a material design button not all components are by default material design but this button by default is a material button, not just a regular Android Studio button. By default, this button will be styled as a material button. And if you go to your, your code, you'll see it's just called button. It's not called anything special. We also are getting a suggestion to constrain the button because we are inside of a constraint layout. So we could add constraints to the button. For that we'll go to layout and we'll just hit plus on all of these blue buttons to create constraints. There we go, now the suggestion goes away. Alright, so as I mentioned, this button it just uses the text button because it's what's known as auto-inflated. Behind the scenes this actually is com.google.android.material.button.material button. That's actually what this button is where it comes from but we can simply use the key, key phrase button to get this button and that's thanks to some components like button already being auto inflated to use the material theme you'll notice back here in my design view the button is looks exactly the same but we don't need this long form version for material button we just need button now again, that's not for all components, just for button and several others. All right, let's get started with checking out the different types of buttons. By default here, we can see our button has 
stylings in that it has a background color and it also has rounded borders. So that is one type of button with the background color and the also the rounded corner giving it some prominence because it does have a color which draws the eye to the button. That type of button is known as a contained button. Because they have a color applied to it, a background color, that makes them high emphasis. So you, the eye will be drawn to this type of button. It's not subtle. And it is also the default button type, which means we don't have to specify any style for it. Let's say, however, that I wanted to change this button type. What if I wanted to change its styling so that it did not have any background color? If I wanted to make the button less pronounced, then I would want to remove its background color so that way it's less visible. So for less important actions, for example, an action maybe inside of a card, we could remove the background color for a button. For that, we will go back to our code view and we're still using a button type. We're just going to apply a style to the button. So let me add in Android style, or it's not even Android style, actually, it's just style. And we're going to use the at style attribute. And look here, we have a whole range of styles that we can choose from quite a lot. I'm going to use my style type of style widget dot material components, which means I am getting a component that is styled with material design. Then I'm going to grab button and I have all these options. I have outline button. I have text button. I have text button dialog. I have unelevated button. I have floating action button, extended floating action button. So these are all different styles for buttons and we will take a look at the different types of buttons. Let's start with a text button. So now I'm still using a button tag for a button object, but I've applied a different style onto it. And I can only do this thanks to material design. Then if I go to design view, look at this, my button has definitely changed. Look at that. The button now does not have a background color. So that makes the button secondary instead of a primary button because this button would be less prominent on your screen. You could also choose a different type of button, like for example, an outline button. An outline button, as you can imagine, it's going to have an outline. There we go, a gray rounded rectangle. And we can see that in our design view. We will take a look at other types of buttons as well later on, but those are the three, the three primary button types. Onto a button, you can also add in an icon if you'd like. So for an app icon, we will call app icon, and we are going to use the drawable, this drawable reference. And we're using AB vector test, which is one of the few default items you'll have that you can use for an icon. And look, now we have this arrow inside of our button. And that's because we are using an icon inside of the button. If we want a more icons, what we can do is we can grab a plugin, very commonly used. I don't believe I have it currently in the project, but I can add it. So let's just search for plugin. Okay, let's go to tools. Kotlin and configure Kotlin plugin updates. All right, and then go to plugins. Here we have a whole range of plugins we could add into Android Studio. You can already also see which ones you already have installed. Okay, so I already have my material design icon generator installed. If you don't have it installed, then go to marketplace and search for it and install it. This material design icon generator, it's a plugin full of icons created by material design. They are copyright free for you to use. With this material design icon generator, we can make a whole range of new icons that we want to use in our app. 
How do we make a new icon? Well, we are going to visit File, New in our main header. And at the very bottom, once you've installed the Icon Generator plugin, very commonly used, then you can click on that Material Design Icon Generator and you can generate a new icon. So there's a whole range of icons that you can access and create from Material Design. For example, Social Mood, History, Education, there's quite a few and these are all created by Material Design. So for example, I could use perhaps a custom icon like well, I could use any one of these really like let's say sentiment satisfied alt so a smiley face I can also specify the color of my button so I could make the button a color that looks good on a white background so perhaps I will make my button let's say not that purple let's say we'll make it a deep purple Okay, so we have this color now applied to the icon. We can also set the theme, fill, outline, round, two-tone, or sharp. Fill is more obvious on some buttons that can be filled versus outlined. For example, if you had a heart, you could use a heart, and let's see, just search for heart here. I think a heart is called like or love perhaps not okay that's fine but choose any icon that you want to start out with out with like a cloud for example if you use a cloud it's very obvious fill versus outline you can also then set the size of the icon as well let's do 24 dp and then you can give your button a custom name like for example it does create this automatic name for you but you can give it your own name like cloud .xml, and that will generate this cloudy icon for you. Make sure it's a vector of drawable and then hit generate. So you'll get this little pop-up that says icon created successfully and you can hit OK and then hit close to close the generator and now if you look in your drawable folder for this project you will have drawable slash cloud and look at that it even appears right here on the left hand side of the code and if you go to design view now you'll see a cloud and that's thanks to material design icons which you can get with the material design icon generator plugin great okay so that is how you can create a button you can change this to see whether for an actionable piece of text in the button all right in this lecture, we learned how to create several types of buttons and also how to add custom icons into those buttons. Icons in the buttons are not accessibility readable, but the text inside of the button is readable by accessibility services like screen readers. All right, now that we know one type of button, we've looked at these these three primary buttons. Let's look at one more type in the next lecture known as the toggle button. Join me in the next lecture to continue looking at buttons. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In the previous lecture we looked at three buttons. We saw the default contained button, then we created a text button and an outlined button. In this lecture, we're going to look at another type of button known as the toggle button. Toggle buttons allow you to have several buttons together and you can toggle which one is shown. All right, let's go ahead and build out a toggle button group. All right, for this, we're going to enter our code view and below our current button let's add in we're going to add in another button all right and we can actually set it up quickly by hitting enter and then we can set its width and height like width of wrap content and height of wrap content then let's close off the button as well with this self-closing tag all right and 
inside of this button, we want to put in some text. You can say, this is page one. And this is a regular button. We also are going to want to constrain the button as the prompt tells us. We have here, if we hover over this red text, we can see this view is not constrained. And so we can constrain it. To constrain this button, we can just go to design view and here it is at the top here, but let's move it down. So now it's a bit lower and inside of the the attributes tab, we can hit plus on all of these constraint buttons in the constraint widget in our layout tab. Okay, so now the button is constrained, which our app wants because we have a constraint layout right here. All right, so now we have a button, but how do I make this button be a toggle button? Well, what I can do is put it into a material button toggle group. This comes from material design and it creates a group of buttons that can be toggled. All right, so I'm going to open up another tag, com.google.android.material.button.material button toggle group. All right, here we go. And we also have to close off the opening tag and then we have to put this closing tag below the button that we created. Okay, so here we have our header or our opening tag for our material button toggle group. We, are, we will be prompted to give this group a width and a height. So let's make sure we add that. Let's add Android layout width and we will do wrap content. And then similarly, we'll do Android layout height and we can set that to wrap content. All right, so now we can also add constraints to this group. And what we can do is take the constraints from our button and we can use those as the constraints for this material button toggle group. All right, so now our button is inside of a group. And currently, because there's just one button in the group, we don't see the any changes, but what we can do is put both of the buttons that we currently have into the toggle group, or we can just make page two, page three as well. All right, so let's do page two, page three and by creating some new buttons. So we'll just copy the current page one button we have and let's paste it three times and then change the text to be page three and page two. Now in our design, look at that. We have three buttons all in a row and that's because they're inside of a material button toggle group coming from material design. In order to actually allow the user to see that these buttons are each their own button, not just one long button. What we can do is change the button style on each of these to be the outlined style. In my code here, I will apply a style to each of my three buttons. All right, so I have three buttons inside of my group and I'm going to add to each of them a style attribute. And that style is going to be the material button outlined style. This is very similar to what we currently have. We currently already have this style of an outlined button and we can use that and paste it for each of these buttons. We are using the material design button type of outlined button and we will put that onto each of our three buttons, page one, page two, and page three. Okay, look at this. Now we can see page one, page two, and page three. We have three different buttons here. And what we can do for our three buttons here is we can actually add a listener to perform some action 
depending on which button is pressed. So if I press page one, I'll show one piece of content. If I show page two, I'll show another piece of content. If I show page three, I'll show a different piece of content. We could also apply our own custom theming to the buttons instead of using the default colors and rounded corners of this button styling. We could apply our own brand theming via material theming. So let's say we wanted to style our buttons. Well, we can apply button theming by going to styles.xml. So let's go to our project and visit the app folder. And we'll want to create a new file to store all of our styles. So for example, let's see, I could copy this one file and then I could paste it in and call it styles to create this new file called styles. Then I'll just have to remove from it the default string, which is the app title. Okay, so here I have my resources tag and I can make a new style with a style tag. So let's see, currently we don't have any styles here, but I want to also apply stylings another way. So we could either make our own styles, which would be custom styles here in the styles folder. Another way, however, is to go into themes. Okay, so if we go to themes.xml, we can see we already have some themes for our whole app created by default, all right? And we can make our own styles and that will save us a lot of time from having to retype out the style that we want on each item. We could do that with the styles.xml. We could also just theme the whole app here because you see here, I have a style that is called theme.starterandroidui. And I have a parent called theme.materialcomponents.daynight.darkactionbar. This comes from material design and it sets the default parent theme for my app. And then I have several items. I have color primary, color primary variant, and color on primary. This is the primary brand color. Then I have secondary brand colors called color secondary, color secondary variant, and color on secondary. And I have a status bar color as well. So these were all created for me by default when I made my project. But I can change these. I don't have to use purple here. I could use any color I wanted. So I could go to add color and see what colors I have currently. Okay, let's see, I have black, I have card view. I don't really have that many you see here, but I could make new colors. So to make new colors, I'll go to my project folder, res and then values, and I'll open colors.xml. All right, here we have different colors and we can even see them on the left-hand side. These colors are the default project colors that you will have available for you to use but you can create your own colors. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make a new color. I'll call this color name of orange, for example. What I can do is find an orange color scheme online and I can find the hex code for a orange color that I want to use. You could use any brand color you wanted. For example, there is an orange color that has the hex code of FD5602. We also want to add FF in front of it, which is pretty consistent with what we have above, but we don't have to, but that's what we have by default. Okay, so this is a hex code color representing the color orange here that we can see. So now, inside of my themes, instead of using purple, what I can use is orange. So let me just set my color primary to color and then I can now choose orange. Look at that. There it is. It's now appeared. And inside of activity main, look at that. My purple button color became orange instead. And if I change the 
the style to the default style instead of an outlined button, for example, perhaps on sea weather. If I remove that outlined button style and go to design, that will give me a default button style, but it will now have an orange background color because instead of using purple as my primary color, I'm set my own custom color to orange. All right, there are more custom themings that you can also apply to buttons. And these themings, they will be applied throughout your whole app. So anywhere where my app uses color primary, which is the default color, I am going to use orange instead of what I had earlier here, which was purple 500. Let's look at more ways that we can apply custom theming to our buttons. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In the previous lecture we learned how to build out a toggle button group and in this lecture we are going to look at how we can apply custom theming to the buttons. Earlier we were able to change the button color by creating a new color in our colors.xml file and then using that color as our primary color. But we can change more than just color. For example, we could change fonts, we could also change shape appearances, we could change corners, so instead of using a rounded border we could use custom stylings for our shape. Let's start with that. Let's start with changing our button to not use a rounded corner but instead to use a different corner style. Alright, so what we're going to do is visit themes.xml and we are going to create a new style for our button. Okay, so I will make a new style and I can give this style a custom name such as shape appearance and I'll do shape appearance dot app dot custom or I'll do dot small component. Okay. All right, so this is going to be the name for our style. It will be shape appearance dot app dot small component. We also have to specify the parent. The parent is going to be shape appearance dot material components dot small component. So this comes from material design this small component type but then we can override it and set custom stylings. For example we can make an item and we'll call this the corner family. Corner family is the rounding that we want. So do we want a rounded corner? Do we want a cut corner? We could do a cut corner so that is going to change the rounded border into a cut border. We can also set the corner size. You can see here we can set corner radius, corner family, and more. Let's change corner size. That will apply to all four sides. We're going to change the corner size. Let's do 5 dp. Okay, so now we have this new style and we are calling it shape appearance dot app dot small component. Then inside of our style for the app, so this means that this style will be applied throughout the whole app, we can add in a new item that is going to be shape appearance small component. And we can use this wherever we want, such as on a button, and we are going to use the style that is shape component. 
Okay, and just like this, we have a new item that we can reference quickly with shape, appearance, small component, and that refers to this style. And this style, we set our custom corner type. Now take a look at activity main.xml. Look at the corners on our buttons. On all of our button types, the corners are now cut instead of rounded. And that is because our buttons, they just use the button type. So they come from widget.materialcomponents.button. And every button in material design, it will have this shape appearance small component and we are overriding its default to instead use our custom style which has a corner family of cut instead of rounded and has a corner size of 5 dp let's say we change the corner size to 15 dp well look at that now the corner cut is much larger all right so that is how we can set custom theming to buttons. And the idea is that by using different themings, you can really show your whole brand throughout your whole app. And you do that by using theme. So depending on what your brand is, you can set the theme to match your brand. And that's done not just with colors, but also with shape choices as well as fonts. All right, so that is how you can apply your branding via custom theming of objects. And you can apply custom theming not just to buttons, but onto other object types as well. All right, join me in the next section. We are going to look at a new type of button known as a fab. A floating action button. This is quite a different button from the rest, so I'm excited to show you how to add a floating action button to your apps in the next section. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In this lecture we're going to learn about a new type of button known as the floating action button. A floating action button is going to create a action on the screen that appears on top of all the other screen content. There are three different sizes for a fab, a floating action button. Let's start by building a regular sized floating action button. Okay, so I am going to navigate to my code and at the end of my current setup here, in which I'm continuing on from the previous section. I'm going to add another object to my layout and that is going to be from com.google.android.material.floatingActionButton. I have several options for the types of floating action buttons I want to add. Let's select the, select the regular floating action button and close off that tag. All right, for this button, we are going to need to define two attributes, layout height. First of all, we can do wrap content. And then similarly, we also want to define layout width. We can also set layout width to wrap content. All right, other than that, we also want to add constraints to our button because currently look at that by default, it, it's at that top left-hand corner but I can drag it to anywhere I want, top left, bottom right is another common location for it. We can use top left for now. Okay, but we do want to add constraints onto the button because we are using a constraint layout. So I'll just apply all of the four constraints that are the default for this button. All right, and here is what my button looks like so far. It's just a circle. Now when the user clicks on this circle, it's going to create a floating action on top of all of the other content. Inside of my code here, I can specify the text that I want to be inside of the button. I can either use text or 
much more commonly I can use an icon. So let's go ahead and put in an icon. So what we do for a floating action button is we use something known as app source compat. And this will allow us to grab an icon. We can grab an icon from Drawable. Currently we don't have very many so we can make a new icon by going to File, New, and then going to Material Design Icon Generator, our plugin. And I'll just look for a plus. Okay, the plus is Add, yes, okay. I am going to select the Add, which is under Content, so Content slash Add. I can choose between different themes, but because the icon is so simple, the themes actually don't apply. I can also choose a color. For example, I could go to the oranges. And okay, we don't have, oh, there we go. Okay, so we could choose an orange color, perhaps a dark orange. Okay. Then we could also set the size. And then we can set a custom name for this button, such as plus dot XML. Make sure the type is vector drawable and then hit generate. You'll get this notification that the icon was created successfully. You can hit OK and then close the generator. And now inside of our drawable, look at that, we have at drawable slash plus. And let's see. And I also want to go to my design and now I can see it. You'll notice the color and the size has actually been removed to fit the default style for a floating action button instead, but the icon is still there. All right, so this is the default view for a floating action button. We can hit run to allow us to test out the button inside of our emulator. We could set a custom width and height for the button as well if we wanted to increase its size. You could certainly change that. For accessibility it's also useful to set your content description for the button. So I'll set Android content description and I'll put in a description of what this button does. So I'll, I could say that this button hit plus to see more, for example. Okay, now I can pull up my emulator because my build succeeded. And look, here is my button. And I can click on it and right now nothing happens because we haven't set the action, but what would happen is that a floating menu would appear. And look at this, our button is also styled as a diamond. And why did that happen? Well, that happened because I set my default corner for any button to be 15 dp of a cut. So instead of by having the default of a circle, I will now instead use this cut corner for my button. And that only appears when I hit run. All right, so that is a floating action button. We're also getting a suggestion to set vector drawables dot use support library to true. So we can do that inside of our build.gradle. We could go to default config in build.gradle and we could set vector drawables dot use support library to true. Then hit sync to ensure that this new build gradle file connects to the app file. Okay, and that will remove our error in a moment. Great, there we go. Now we have no more errors. All right, and that is the default floating action button. There are also other sizes for a floating action button. We could use a mini floating action button on smaller screens. So all we have to do is go to the code and we set the size. So I'll add in app fab size and I'm going to set the size to mini. So now in my design view, look at that. 
my floating action button is smaller. A third type of floating action button is the extended floating action button, which allows for text. All right, so to make an extended floating action button, I can change this type into extended floating action button instead of just the regular floating action button. You can go to your design and you'll see the button is now much larger. And inside of your code now, you'll have to change the way you reference the button. Instead of app source compat, you will have to set Android text first of all and put in some strings such as see more. And in your design, you can see that see more. And as well, you'll have to change this app source compat instead to app icon. And look at that. Now our floating action button says see more and it has an icon. Now you may be wondering why is the floating action button the color of teal? Well, if you go to themes.xml, you can see we have this teal color, which is known as color secondary. That means any material object that uses color secondary will become teal. That tells us that material design fab uses color secondary. If we want to change the color to a different color, we could. We could just go to color secondary and change this teal. So in colors, we can make a different color instead of teal. We can make a color such as, for example, we could say mustard. And we could then use a mustard color. So I'm going to use the mustard hex color FFA F42. And look at that, now we have this mustardy color. And then instead of themes, I will change this color instead of teal 200. I am going to use color slash mustard, which now is available. And inside of activity main, look at that. My fab is now using the mustard color. We could also change the text color if we wanted to change it to white. That's another option. And remember, although it looks rounded right now, if I hit run, my fab will have the cut corners. And that's because inside of themes, I specified in the previous section that I wanted every button or every object really that uses shapeappearance.app.small component. If it uses shapeappearance.materialcomponents.small component, then I'm going to instead make its corners cut. But that's only if the parent is small component. If it uses shape appearance small component. So if the object does not use this item name shape appearance small component, then I won't have the cut corners. So let's pull up the emulator here. And once it loads, we'll be able to see. Look here, our fab does have the cut corners. Why does it have those cut corners? Well, because that means it must indeed use this item name, shape, appearance, small component. All right, great. So that is how you can create a floating action button and also how you can style it inside of your themes. So the themes.xml, if it's inside of this style name theme.starter Android UI, that means the theme will be applied throughout the whole app of my app starter Android UI. Great, join me in the next section. We're going to learn about a new type of object and that is going to be a card. I hope to see you over there. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In the previous lecture, we learned how to add a floating action button to our project. And in this lecture, we're going to start with a new project to learn how to add a card with material design. Let's make an empty activity and we will call this our, let's see, 
Kickstarter Android UI 2. Make sure you have a unique package name and a save location and that you're using Kotlin. Then hit finish. This is going to launch for us the app that we'll start with. Okay, in this app, we currently will just have a default text view, hello world. And to make the layout easier to work with, I'm going to change it from a constraint layout type to a linear layout type. That way we won't have to apply constraints to every single object. Okay, great. So let's get started with adding a card. A card is a combination of objects. So it will be an image with also some text and then actions all together in a neat card view. So how do we make a card? Well, we're going to use what is known as a material card view. All right, so I'm going to make a new object called com.google.android.material.card and dot material card view. Then I can place my text view into the material card view as the first item in the material card view. Okay, now for this material card view, I'm going to want to give it a layout height and the layout height can be wrap content. I'm also going to want to give it a layout width and let's do match parent. Okay, inside of my design view, not much has changed. I still have my hello world text here which I could increase its size to make it a little bit easier to read. Let's see. I just have to make sure I select the text itself, not the material card view that the text is inside of. Okay, so we have our two objects here. One card view parent and a child text view. We can put in more items into this card such as an image view. Let's set the width to be match parent and the height to equal wrap content. Then let's close off that image view. And in order to set the content of the image, we're going to use the property app source compat. And we're going to use at drawable, which is our folder of images, but we'll have to put into that folder of drawable images, we'll have to put in an image that we want to use. For example, I have found an image called wallstreetcoder.png. This is an image that I actually created and it's for one of our other courses, Wall Street Coder. And I'm going to drag this image into my drawable folder and hit refactor. And I've included this image for you in the source files at the end of this section in case you want to use the same image, but you can use any image you want. Okay, so now I can grab that image by going to drawable slash Wall Street Coder. And inside of my design view, look at that. There is the image. Now we could also change the image size. For example, we could change its width and height to be wrap content. So both of them will be wrap content. That means the width and height of the image will be only as big as their parent, which is material card view. If we change the material card view to be wrap content, then that means the card view will only be as wide as it needs to be. All right, so because our image view is wrap content, it will just take up all of its content. We didn't use the match parent. For the text view, we did use match parent. And that's why the text view will take up the whole width if it needs to. All right, so this is what our card view looks like right now, but we can make this a lot more neat. For example, we can put all of our objects into a linear layout. Okay, so what I will do is inside of my material card view, I will make a linear layout object. Its width can be match parent and its height wrap content. Okay, then 
I can close off that tag and I'm going to put my image view and my text view into that linear layout. So now my two objects, they are going to be inside of a linear layout. Here we go. And we also cannot see hello world anymore. And if we go to our component tree, we can see our hello world is just being hidden. So let me just move this over and find the hello world. Okay, I could also drag hello world on top of my image view. Okay, so now I see hello world. So the reason that we can't see hello world if image view is on top is because we have the default linear layout, which will be an orientation of horizontal. But if I change the orientation to vertical instead, my items will be stacked vertically instead of horizontally. Okay, then I also just want to reduce the height of my image view. So I'll change the height to something static like 200 dp. Okay, now the image, because its height has been adjusted, it means that I can see Hello World. Otherwise, Hello World is getting, it was getting pushed off. Okay, so my, my image view has a width of wrap content. I could also make it a width of match parent if I wanted it to take up the same width as the card. And this is a very simple card. We could add in more content for the card, such as we could add in more text. We could also put in buttons. Okay, so let's say I want to put in several buttons. Well, I could add them either into the same linear layout or outside of the linear layout. I definitely recommend inside of the linear layout. We can put in a button and then we can give it width of wrap content and height of wrap content. Okay, then we can close off the button and we will want to give it some text or at least an icon. Let's set the text to content such as enroll. Okay, so now in my design view, I also have a button that's been added to my card. And so as you can see, my card, it contains all three of my items. And this is a way of grouping items together into one larger object. All right, and that is how you can create a card. Join me in the next lecture where we are going to continue looking at how to use material design to develop apps. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Android UI course. In this section, we are going to learn how to build a top app bar with material design. I've opened up a brand new project here, it's still loading up. Let's enter activity main.xml where we are going to get started. Currently, we just have a default item that is a text view, but let's remove that text view and replace it with an app bar. So first we're going to have to put in an app bar layout. So we'll use com.google.android.material.appbar.appbarlayout. Okay, let's make a closing tag for the app bar layout as well. And two properties that we are going to need to set are the width and height. Let's set the width to match parent and let's set the height to be wrap content. Next, let's also change our constraint layout type instead into a coordinator layout type because that way we won't have to set constraints to every item. All right, so I'm going to use the coordinator layout dot widget dot coordinator layout class for the opening and closing tags here. Okay, great. So now we can see in our design view, all we have is this app bar layout at the top and it takes up the whole screen currently, or rather it actually, it actually doesn't even have any height rather. It takes up the whole screen on the width, but for the height, it's adjustable. Okay, so here is the container for our top app bar. 
this is just the layout so far. We are going to put in another item inside of the app bar layout known as the actual toolbar itself. For that, I will use com.google.android.material.appbar. And this time I'm going to use material toolbar and self close that tag. I have to set the width and height. So let's set width to be match parent. And let's set the height of this bar to be a set height, such as, for example, we could do 300 dp. And OK, here is our material toolbar now. OK, for our app layout, we can now set it to wrap content because now we have the height set on the material toolbar. We can now give our material toolbar some text. So for that, I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to give this item the title of, let's say, Mammoth App. Okay, so now in my design view, I can see that text Mammoth App has appeared. All right, so this is our toolbar so far. We can now apply a style to the toolbar with material design. We'll give it a style of the style coming from widget.material components and that's thanks to material design then I'm going to use toolbar.primary this is the primary toolbar style in my design look at that now I have a background color and my text is white that is the default styling for a toolbar all right I could also add in an icon as well as a menu. Let's put in a menu next. Okay, so what we can add is an app menu property and I'm going to use a menu item that I will call my top app bar. Now I don't actually have this menu item but I can create it. So I can hover over top app bar and click create menu resource file, then hit OK. And that is going to create for me top app bar dot XML. And here is what it looks like in the code. We can see it's just a menu item. And what we can do is we can put items into this menu. Let's put in one item to start. OK. This item is going to need a title. So let me set the title to something like, for example, a menu item of home. Okay, if I go to my design view, I can see this first item has appeared that says home. I can add in some more items as well. Just by opening up another item tag and then I can give this item a title. Let's call this title My Courses. Now in our design view, look at that. We have a second menu item. And I could add in a third item as well. Again, self-closing. And I could give it a title such as My Info. All right, so now we have our menu of three items. And that means we'll now be able to use this top app bar menu as our menu property for our toolbar. And look at that, an ellipses of three dots has appeared in my toolbar. Let's hit run and we'll test out the app now. We are going to have the ability to see a toolbar in our app once it loads up. And the toolbar will allow us to see the three different menu item options. Here is our emulator now, and we can see we have now our top app bar here. We have the title, Mammoth App, and then we have the drop down menu icon. If I click on those three dots, I now see my menu home, my courses, and my info. And I could click on one of these items to visit a different page of the app. And that is how you can build a top app bar. 
All right, join me in the next lecture. We're going to look at another object that we can build with the material design. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.